What's up, Eagle Empire? Ted McCourt here with you. And it's Tuesday. That means it's time for Tuesday TED Talk. Now, today I'm in Button Auditorium, but not for a performance, a show of any type. More so, Moorhead State Rifle. And many of you may not know this, but one of the most successful NCAA rifle programs in the country competes right underneath this stage. The Moorhead State Rifle Program ranked consistently in the top 20 in all of collegiate division one rifle today i sat down with moorhead state junior rifle student athlete ryan henson and talked to him a little bit about the sport and a little bit about himself so we could educate some of our fans who may not know much about rifle about the success that's going on right here in the basement of button auditorium so now we're joined by ryan henson himself here in the Button Auditorium Moorhead State Rifle Range, located in the basement here. Pretty interesting facility. A lot going on down here, Ryan. Ryan, first of all, how are we doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. It's really cool. This is my first time in this facility, in this range. And, and, and you guys, you, pretty neat stuff here. We got we got targets set. We got eight uh, shooting lanes. The coach just told me that's not the right term for it. Well, what do you guys call it? Uh, usually we call them lanes or firing points. Okay, so you're looking directly into a firing point here. And now I want to just ask you, Ryan, uh, let's talk a little bit about rifle, about the sport, and then we'll talk a little bit about you afterwards. Yeah. You know, Moorhead State Rifle, it's, it's a nationally ranked program now. It's, it's, it's on the map. What's it been, been like to be a part of uh, Moorhead State Rifle, and how did you get into rifle? Ooh, that's a great question, Ted. Thank you. Um, first of all, it's been a great experience being able to come to college and participate in an NCAA Division I sport that you don't really get to see a whole lot of. Um, it's something that a lot of people don't know about, and it's something that um, you know I kind of picked up when I was younger as a freshman in high school. Um, I actually wanted to start hunting, so I asked my parents for my birthday for some hunter safety courses, um, and they kind of just told me, like, hey, we don't really do that, not a whole lot, but here's a class that'll teach you how to shoot, a little bit about gun safety and all that stuff. Um, so I tried it out, and then I ended up being pretty good, I guess. Uh, so I stuck with it for four years and then ended up coming here um, to Moorhead State. It's a little bit different from hunting, though. Yeah, you got a little bit off of that, but do you still you, you, is that still like a hobby? You do you hunt? Actually, no. I've never gone hunting since. Um, is that something you find like? Is there many? Is do many people that are participate in this sport? Or that or, is that how they get into it? Kind of. Ooh, that's a good question. I'm not. I'm not too sure how most people get into it. Um, I think they just go to a club and try it out, and then. I mean, most people enjoy it just for the fact that you can come and shoot for a sport. Um, but then as you kind of get into the sport and you realize that there's so much more behind it that um, you just fall in love with it, really. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about what's behind it. It's a really like, technological-based sport. I mean, okay. these targets are all, you know, ran with computers, with, with lasers. It's really just – it's a very modern. It's not just shooting onto a paper target. I know that – some schools may still use that, but we're up to up to date here. Yeah, definitely. It's it's a big difference when you first start out. I mean, you're given just this kind of small 22 rifle, um, at least I was, with just a wooden stock. And then you work your way all the way up until you get to the NCAA, where you have electronic targets that, like you said, use lasers and sound and things like that. Um, and it just goes so much farther than kind of what you start with. Now, you started in high school is when you started competing in rifle. Is that a, it's not you don't see it so much here in Kentucky. It doesn't seem a high school level rifle. I know some schools in their area are starting it, but what was how, how was it competing at the high school level and, and you know now coming to the collegiate level? Is it a whole different level of competition? You know how it is in, in other sports. Is it a completely different level of competition? That's a really good question as well because I think rifle is kind of the one sport that like your age your body type like anything doesn't necessarily define like if you're going to be good at it or not because in high school definitely you haven't been shooting that long you don't have a lot of time to practice so your scores aren't going to be you know necessarily the best but you still have your high school shooters that come out and can easily compete with nationally ranked people and you know nationally ranked teams and those are kind of the best junior shooters that we kind of call them um, in the nation now those junior shooters then you know how does a 
how do you become recruited? How do you, how did you learn about Moorhead State and it's a rifle program and, and how do how do those student athletes become student athletes? So I became, um, I guess, recruited in a sense that I think everybody starts off with just looking at what schools have this program. So Moorhead State is one of, I think, 30 or so. So rifle, like I said, it's, it's a pretty small sport, so not many schools have it. So you look at that, and then I looked at, okay, which schools have kind of the degree programs that I'm looking for? So that'll kind of narrow down your search a little bit. And then from there, um, my junior, senior year, I kind of just sent out letters, emails saying to these coaches, hey, I'm interested in participating in um, your NCAA program. So do they have, you know, rankings? Is there a website you can get onto and say, this is the best guy in the nation. We got to get him at Moorhead State. Yeah, NCAA has rankings. Um, CRCA, so the Collegiate Rifle Coaches Association, um, those will post rankings every week. And that's that's pretty much where you look at. You kind of start from the top and you go down and you say, hey, these schools are you know, they're up there. That's kind of where I want to shoot for. And I shouldn't just say guys because this is a co-ed sport. I mean, it's it's competition between men and women, and that's got to be a little different. You know, from the outsider's perspective, what, what's that bring into the shooting range? Ooh, a lot, a lot. <laughs> it's, it's definitely entertaining. It's the only – I hear it as the only true co-ed sport mm -hmm. because there's nothing that really – there's nothing that changes between either a male competing or a female competing. It's the same distance, the same kind of match that you shoot, um, and it just brings a whole different team dynamic when you have a co-ed team like that. And at Moorhead State, we have quite a few females, um, only a couple males. So, you know, every year as people shift and, you know, people graduate, you get new freshmen, that whole dynamic shifts. Um, so. And you guys got some pretty good uh, female shooters here at Moorhead State, you know, just uh, – Alexa Pods, the Pod sisters, uh, they've been great. And, and all right, now let's talk a little bit about the equipment that goes into it. I, I, talking to, to Coach beforehand, it's a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of money with the, that goes into these uh, guns. You have the small bore and you have your air rifle guns. Just you know, we have air rifle here. If you want to show it real quick, and this is actually your air rifle, and just you know, tell the people what they're looking at. Yeah. So this is. Um a Pardini air rifle. So it's actually not technically mine. I'm borrowing it from a friend right now um, because I decided that I would like to try this model out for probably the rest of the season. Um, but as you can see, um, Pardini is said right there, kind of on the stock. I do have a couple other parts on it. So this is a fine work bow cheek piece, um, which is another manufacturer of air rifles. Um, this is an on shoots rear sight and an on shoots front sight as well. Um, but those are kind of just parts that you can interchange with any rifle that you have. And this this is your air rifle, so it's completely air compression. Uh, yep. It's it that's what fires the mechanism, I guess you would say. It's not like a uh, uh, like you just shoot a regular gun. Like basically, the small bore is more of a 22, right? Yes, yes. Small bore is 22 caliber, just rifle. So there's two different competitions and. Do you have a particular one that you prefer? Or, I mean, you got to compete in both, but. Yeah, definitely. Um, it really just depends on the day sometimes. I enjoy small board just specifically because you're shooting three positions. Mm -hmm. You're shooting kneeling, prone, and standing. So there's a lot more technical aspects and a lot more positions that you have to work with. So I enjoy that because it's a lot more, I guess, rigorous and a rigid kind of set of things that you're working with. Um, whereas air rifle is 60 shots standing. So that is just the same position the whole time for 60 shots. And I think of it more as a mental challenge um, to stay focused for all 60 shots, to do everything exactly the same on each shot so that you can perform your best. And to give you guys a little example, this target here behind us, it goes up and down. So when they're shooting small bore, the 22 rifle per se, here from the different positions, that'll go up or down. However, you guys need it based on height. Now, that has to be a real challenge with the air rifle, though. Like you said, that's 60 shots, the exact, you know, same technique, same thing over and over and over. What's the, you know, breathing techniques? It's it meant, your, your mental ability. It's, it's really tasking, I'm sure. For, and how long does that competition take? So, yeah, it, it takes an hour and 15 minutes um, just for your 60 record shots. And we have a 15-minute sighting and prep time before that. So overall, an hour and a half um, that you get to, I guess, compete for that. And your preparation into that, you got to have clear mind, clear focus, I'm sure. 
I know that you guys you guys do a lot of work with sports our sports psychologists here at Moorhead State and how important is that for for you you know getting ready for match just getting ready for the season and going through the season yeah that's it's it's so important that's I would say a lot the ma the majority of what we do really because if you can't have that mental fortitude and that mental focus to I mean, literally do the exact same thing to the millimeter of what you're trying to do every single shot for 60 shots in a row. That takes a lot of mental willpower and just focus at what you're trying to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does. And what, do you, what does the sports psychology kind of, what does that give you guys? Do, do all schools have that or is that just, is that a normal thing around the country? It depends. It depends on where you go. Not all schools have it, I should start off by saying. Um, we're fortunate enough to kind of get a partnership with um, UK's sports psych department. Um, so we have someone who comes down about every two weeks, every week to work with us. Um, and it's, it's extremely important. I mean, you can see all the top teams. They have someone dedicated to specifically doing that for their team, meeting with them every week and um, working with them on that. So you guys have just, you know, gotten better and better through your since you got here right I mean, how's 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 it been being a part of this growing program and last year you know Brandon Breyer and Alexa Potts competing in the NCAA championships you guys were up to 10th in the nation what's it like seeing your guys' names up there or around the top top of the uh with the big dogs I guess you would say uh it's it's awesome it's it's great to see I think a lot of people think of Moorhead State as a smaller school, a smaller campus, um, and it's great to see us competing up there, you know, placing higher than big schools like Ohio State and um, places like that. It's just, it's really awesome to see just the growth that this team has been able to accomplish and the effort and the work that we've put into it, and to see that unfold is, is really awesome. Now, your guys' season runs from the fall until February, correct? Yes, yep. And how many competitions do you guys compete in annually each year? I believe it is 13 or 15. Um, there's there's a max that you can't go over that limit, and I think that's 13 or 15. And that would include OVC championships and then your qualifier. Now, and you guys can take scores from – you take three score your three best scores, basically, and that's what qualifies you for the NCAA tournament. How important – you know, in, in the other sports, we emphasize you got to win the OVC. Mm -hmm. How – is the you know OVC I'm sure is still important, but what's the what's the difference? What's the pecking order at, per se? Yeah, good question. That's it's the thing with our sport is like you say other sports you got to win your championships, you got to win as many games as you can. Um, Rifle is unique and it's not necessarily head to head is what the important thing is. I mean, sure it's nice to win, you know, most of the time, but. Um, really, it's the score you're shooting, and it's you want to improve upon you know your top three scores so that you do have the best shot of making NCAA. So every time you're going out, you're just looking to improve your score, just you, you know making improvements every time out, and that's what you when you go into a season. Is that what you you know want to see? Just gradual improvement throughout the season, or are you just you wanting to fire your best away your first meet? and just keep that up? I mean, how do, how do you go into it, into a season? Both. I would say both. You obviously want to do the best you can, and you don't really get a whole lot of say of um, what matches you have when and things like that. So if you have most of your away matches at the beginning of the season, you need to be ready to go, and you need to hit those hard in order to get those away scores um, for NCAA. So. Because you're, you're only, of those three scores, only one can be from a home match, correct? Yeah. So the other two, you have to get – those from your away match pool it's, that's kind of an interesting little tidbit about it now it's more it's also an individual sport like I said we had two individuals qualify last year how much of it is more of an individual aspect as to a team aspect yeah that's I think a lot of people say rifle is a very individualized sport and I'm I'm behind that mostly as it's just you up there on the firing line it's everything that you're doing um, with your rifle and you know trying to shoot the best shot that you can but I do think a big part of it as well is just the team atmosphere just the team camaraderie camaraderie that you can have um, and how everybody interacts together because that's ultimately going to pull you up or pull you down as a team and affect your performances. Yeah, I'm sure like you said with the you know, you know the mental aspect of it all you, you can't have drama going on in, in the locker room right? Yeah definitely definitely that's true. Uh, so, Ryan, anything else you just really want to let people know about Rifle and, and um, you know, 
that, that's, that's something you just want to, you want to tell people. Um, I think the biggest thing is just realizing how much of a technical sport rifle is because I think a lot of people look at it and you know we aren't running around all over the place all the time we aren't you know doing as much physical activity as other sports are but we're still putting in about four hours every day of just these very small changes that we do things with our mental performance uh, making sure that like I said everything is exactly the same every single shot and that it takes a lot of work and it's something that I'm proud of to say that I can compete in this sport and I enjoy it a whole lot so very routine based I know a lot of sports are very routine based you get in the routine of when you practice when you play it's yeah it's very routine based I'm sure how much does that go into your your daily you know walking around campus you, you get into a routine yeah yeah definitely I have to I have to plan everything out on a calendar I have to plan out my whole day um, you know right now I have practice at this time workouts at this time classes then and then work um, so it's yeah it carries over definitely <laughs> now Ryan so off the rifle range you're a junior here at Moorhead State and you, you talked about earlier about you were looking at schools trying to find the right rifle school for you with the right major and what did that end up being here at Moorhead State um, that was mathematics actually and that was basically a big reason I actually came here I like telling the story because I had three uh, majors in mind and you know I visited the first two departments I think it was psychology and criminal justice or something I was like okay you know I like it but then I stepped into the math department office and just I was immediately greeted by so many nice people that were so welcoming and honestly that is a huge huge reason that I ended up here at Moorhead State. You hear that from a lot of people it's just got this home feel and home for you Rock Hill, South Car Rock Hill, South Carolina. I think it listed on the websites Washington, St so Washington State. So you kind of you kind of split the country there, huh? and and here you are in Moorhead. Yeah, definitely. We we actually I was born in Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan. Okay. Um, so we moved actually out to Washington State, and then came here. And while I was at school, my parents decided, hey, we'll just you know get up and move to South Carolina. So <laughs> that was that's that's pretty interesting. Now, um, also this is home now, but what's uh what's some other things that you're involved with here at Moorhead State other, other than rifle that's you know not in that well in athletics obviously student athlete advisory committee but some other things you're involved with yeah as you said um, student athlete advisory committee I am also a member of athletes in action um, so that's just a Christian group with athletes here on campus and then I'm also a member of Phi Sigma Pi National Honor Fraternity you said athletes in action we got to shout out Rich Duffield and he's 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 my guy um now Anything you just want to, you want to close up? I mean, uh, shout anybody out? Just uh, you know, anything? Any final message? I should say. Oh, good question. Um, I guess hi to my family. Um, you've been a great support to me. Um, thank you to my girlfriend for being also a great support. Um, she's on the rifle team at West Virginia, so super awesome to see that. Um, and just all my friends, family here on campus, I can't appreciate you guys enough. You do a whole lot for me, supporting me in everything that I do. So I greatly appreciate that. All right, Ryan, we really appreciate you joining us here. And it was great to kind of spend a few hours here in the rifle range and learn a little bit about the, learn a little bit about the sport. It's, it's really interesting. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Ryan Henson, Moorhead State Rifle.